I don't want to make too grandiose a claim, but I, I've done some research with my graduate students on political correctness per se, because we've been interesting, interested in the personality predictors of political belief. It really does turn out that you vote your personality far more than you think, because like what you think is that you look at the world and there's a landscape of facts and you view the facts objectively and you derive your conclusions. And the thing is, it doesn't really work that way because there's just too damn many facts, right? And so you can't even really get an unbiased sample of them. What happens is that your, your personality works as a filtering mechanism so that certain things stand out for you more than other things. And so some things stand out more for the people on the radical left and some things stand out for people who are liberal and some things stand out for people who are conservative. And then everyone says, well look, I'm looking at the facts and I'm drawing this conclusion. It's like, yeah, but what you don't understand is you're not looking at the same set of facts and you can't even and that's why you have to actually engage in dialogue with other people because they'll expose you to their set of facts and I'm not saying that facts don't exist or that they're relativistic or anything like that one of the things we found out about the politically correct types is that they're high in a trait called agreeableness now you might think really <laughs> that isn't what I would have guessed but but agreeableness is a maternal trait and women are higher in agreeableness than men, that's, that's cross-cultural, and that difference really seems to start uh, manifesting itself primarily at puberty. And so, agreeableness is likely the trait that stops you from throwing your baby at, out the window at three in the morning when it's, been, when it's had colic for three hours and you haven't had any sleep and you're not in very good shape and you just got laid off. It's like it's a very, very tight bonding mechanism. And so what happens, it's primarily driven by what you might describe as compassion. Now, compassion is great for dealing with infants. And maybe it's great for dealing with hurt people and really elderly people, you know. It's good for taking care of people who can't take care of themselves. But it's not a great doctrine to be building a political system on. And so one of the things that happens with the more politically correct types by temperament is that they're, they, they suffer from an excess of impulsive compassion. And they assume that if there's an inequitable distribution of anything, that the people who are at the bottom are all victims who should be treated like infants and that everyone at the top is a vicious snake-like predator and 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 that's hardwired in some sense now it's a very popular story yeah of course of course it's a, and it's an easy story to sell and there's some truth in it but some truth isn't the same as all the truth and so what you see at least in part is undifferentiated empathy and that is not, that's not a virtue. It's not a virtue. You have to think. You can't just feel. You have to think. And, you know, even when you're taking care of kids, part of what you're doing is being compassionate. But if you're too compassionate towards your kids, then you do everything for them. And if you do everything, everything for them, then they grow up useless and they never leave and they hate you. And they hate everything else too. It's a bad idea. And so you use compassion judiciously. You know, there's a rule if you're working in a place like a nursing home. And the rule is, it's a harsh rule, do not do anything for the people that you're taking care of that they can do for themselves. And so if they have to struggle to feed themselves, you don't bloody well intervene and feed them. You let them maintain their damn independence. And you have to be a hard-hearted bastard to do that, you know, to watch someone struggle like that. But you're furthering their long, medium to long-term independence and development, and you do the same thing with your children. Treating your children like they're endless permanent victims is a very bad idea. And I think that's part of what that's part of what's also being taught. We, we also know that the, the kids who are more likely to be rabidly politically correct, one of the reasons that they're more likely to be that way is because they were taught to be that way. We found that even exposure to a single lecture, a single lecture that was associated with the politically correct dogmatic structure was enough to tilt people in that direction. So there's a temperamental proclivity and then there's failure of education to address that, and then there's the exacerbation and exaggeration by the, by the people who are trying to produce, like, activists by proxy 